Hey friends, how are you doing? Happy Monday. Just so you having a good day? And uh, having a morning coffee here. So I thought I'd do a quick update video. Um, hey, as usual, let me do a few quick housekeeping things. Number one, hey. Hey, if you're new to my YouTube channel, why not hit the subscribe button, which I believe is down there. Uh, if you have a Google account, if you don't create one, but uh, that would really help. Give the bell symbol a long press and share this video as well. Uh, secondly, if you're not getting our weekly email newsletter, it's a really great way of keeping in touch, uh, just different things I'm doing. I'm actually writing a book at the moment and I'm sharing some of the chapters as I go along uh, from that book, uh, travel dates, lots of things there, so uh, link below and we send a free gift when you sign up for our newsletter. Oh. And uh, lastly, I mean there's too many things I've got going on to mention, but do check out all the links below. And, uh, Thanks to all of the friends and partners of my ministry as well. If you're not yet a partner of our ministry, what is that? Those are the folks who, in a way, come together and commit to pray, to support, to fellowship, to just um, be supporting us in what we do in many practical and spiritual ways. Paul talked in Ephesians, excuse me, Philippians 4 about the partners he had who'd um, sent him into the mission field. And in a way, Paul, Paul's on 1 Samuel 30, where David says those who go to the battle and those who send those who go to the battle share the same reward. And all of us uh, should be partners, I believe, with people involved in different streams of ministry. So link below, chat that out. Well, I had a really busy day yesterday. I was up, uh, up at the crack of dawn and out uh, for about 14, 15 hours and uh, led worship twice, preached twice, uh, traveled, did all sorts of things. But uh, it's funny, I was speaking yesterday uh, in both my churches, Mass and Connecticut, about the glory of God. And especially in, uh, in Sturbridge in the morning, I think we really broke through into that realm of the glory of God. And um, I'm just thinking, parking, reflecting and exploring the glory of God right now. You know, the glory of God is everything. We were created from God's glory. We were created for God's glory. I like to say every uh, recovering Baptist knows one scripture, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And yet, we always put the emphasis on the sin part and not the glory part. Hebrews 13 says it behooved the captain of our salvation, who is perfected through many sufferings, that he might bring many sons back to the glory. And the whole point of God, Jesus didn't come to forgive your sins. Pause, street copy. Jesus didn't come to forgive your sins. He came to bring you back to the glory. And if we have this kind of evangelical message, it's that we forgave our sins and we're hearing some waiting pattern. Um, we're missing the whole thing. We're saved from, but we're saved to. And uh, God... I believe wants to show his glory in and through the church in the days and weeks to come. You know, I was showing yesterday that when, when Jesus returns, he's coming back for a glorious bride, a bride that's glorious. But literally, I believe he's saying a bride of glory, a, a bride adorned with the glory of God. And uh, I just love being in the glory of God. You know, Ruth Heflin used to talk about kind of like the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. There's a place in worship where in that outer court it's more physical, where we're celebrating. The Bible says we come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise, we clap our hands, we dance, we celebrate, we, we remind ourselves and others what God has done. Look what the Lord has done. Yeah. When you keep in that place of praise, there's a time where the Holy Spirit leads you into a place of worship. And worship is less about what God has done and who He is, the person of God. Worship is less physical in terms of like celebratory and more of the soul. Worship is that, you know, I love you, Lord, I worship you, you were worthy of it all, that kind of thing. I think what the church has missed though is if we will stay in that place of worship, the Spirit of the Lord wants us to bring us into that holy of holies, what I call the glory realm, the inner court of the glory of God. And I believe that's actually the destination of the church. You know, in Second Chronicles, when Solomon dedicated the temple, the Bible says the glory of God came down. And it says literally the priests could not stand to minister because of the weight 
of the glory of God. And um, hmm. I know a lot of ministers, ministries, and I'm one of them, uh, maybe don't want to hear this, but I believe the goal of ministry is to get people into the glory of God and to actually make ourselves redundant. The goal, the true goal of all ministry is to get ourselves to the place where we're no longer needed. Yeah, ministers, like servants, like waiters, if you will, in a restaurant or a cafe or whatever, um, they're not the point. The, the, the coffee is the point, the meal is the point. And we're just there to help people step into the glory of God. So how do we, how do, we do that? Um, I'll try and share some thoughts on that this week. But, uh, you know, one of the ways we do that is by looking in God's word. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 5, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I find it interesting. He never said wives love your husbands. It must be because we're all so lovable. But uh, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her that he might wash and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That's interesting. There's a, when Jesus died and gave himself for us, there's a washing of the blood of Jesus. But there's actually a washing of water, the word, a sanctifying work. He makes us righteous through his sacrifice, his finished work on the cross. But he actually makes us sanctified through his word. Having these promises, let us, us sanctify ourselves. The bride is sanctified, sanctifies herself by the washing of water, by the word. Peter, Paul, Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter says in 2 Peter 1, uh, 2 to 4, whereby are given into us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we become partakers of the divine nature and we escape the corruption in the world through lust, through evil desire. So one of the ways we step into that glory realm is looking into the mirror of God's word. Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 3.18, we all beholding us in a mirror. Uh, the Amplified, classic Amplified says, in the mirror of the word. We are beholding as in the mirror of the word, the glory of the Lord are changed and transformed into that same image. James 1, uh, 18 to the end, James talks about a man who looks in a mirror, talking about the word of God, and then goes away and forgets what he looks like. Yeah? James says that man is like the hearer of the word, but he, he doesn't act upon it. And then James talks about another man who looks into the mirror. James calls it the perfect law of liberty. And he says, James says, he looks into this mirror, but continues therein. And I believe when we will look into the mirror of God's word and continue therein, we'll begin to reflect the image of the one we look upon. See you later. So, hmm, I want to leave you with a quick prayer to pray today. I've been praying all day. I want to pray this for the rest of my life, but at least this week long. There's a prayer Moses prayed, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Hmm, Sila. Gonna drop a few more thoughts on you later in the week in this, but uh, enjoy your Monday wherever you're at. Today's my day off, so I'm cleaning my home and a lot of practical things, but uh, you can stand in the glory, walk in the glory, work in the glory, wash dishes in the glory, do everything you need to in and from the glory of God. Boom, Sila. Thanks for watching guys, uh, hit that subscribe button and share this video if you will, hope to see you soon.